In this video, I'm going to show you five different ways to save incredible amounts of time when you're selling your artwork on Etsy with My Designs. And just in case you're completely new to My Designs, if you click the link in the description, it will bring you to their homepage right here. It's a really, really cool and innovative tool to essentially speed up your workflow when you're trying to sell your designs on Etsy, whether that's for print on demand or for digital downloads. And the cool thing is you can actually sign up to them for free and use a lot of their features, including most of the ones I'm showing you in this video. Video, totally for free and um, obviously there is some limitations um, but still a lot of value in the free plan with my designs so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create tags or keywords for all of your listings in bulk even if they're in different niches first of all you need obviously a collection within the listings tab of various different designs and then the template I'm using right here if in case you want to copy it is in the saved template section under Etsy print on demand by Curtis That's that's what I'm using here. Just click install to apply that to your listings as well. And now in order to bulk generate these tags, we need one primary keyword. And if we click on keywords over here, we've got a field for the primary keyword and double clicking brings this up all the way through. So you could quickly type one in uh, manually like this, baking, and then obviously cycling for the next one. Or if you have all of your files already named after the primary keyword um, of your design, then what you can do is you can click up here to select all listings, head up to actions, click edit in bulk, and and then we can change this from title to primary keyword and where it says primary keyword right here, click into this text box and now we can add a variable. And if you change this right here from value to app, then it is going to use the file name by default for the primary keywords field. So if we apply this and you can see an example here, by the way, that shows you what the first listing is going to look like. It's going to put baking because my design file is called baking for that design. So hit apply to selected listings, click yes. And as we can see now, it is literally filled in every single listing. I'm doing it for five here, but you can do this with the free version um, for 24 listings at a time and with the paid versions, either 48 or 120. And this is only the beginning. So if we go back to listing now, we obviously want to fill this out with lots of various tags for our Etsy listing or wherever else you're listing your designs. So now we head to actions right here and then click on bulk tags. And now we can use two different options right here, either Redbubble or Etsy to pull a sort of relevant or related tags from. Redbubble does seem to get better results. So that's what I like to use. And then we can change this field right here from keywords to primary keyword. That is where we're pulling the keyword from that my designs is going to search Redbubble for. And this tags field right here, we're going to change that to tags. And then we can also set a limit. So for Etsy, for example, you could set the limit to 13 tags. If you're selling on another platform, you could make that higher say 20 or 30 and then just click on generate hit continue and it's going to process for a little while you can see it right here at the top where you can click into your jobs queue to see the currently processing jobs and once it's done it's going to paste all of the relevant and related keywords into this field right here which is definitely really cool um, i need to double click on listing again to show the listing tab for all of these. So we've got cycling, bike, bicycle, MTB cycle. So lots and lots of really good keywords and they're always dependent on the primary ones. So here it's all about fishing. Here it is about gaming, super, super useful feature. Um, now you might have to still check them and delete, for example, Dungeons and Dragons, or you could once again use this bulk function uh, right here to edit in bulk. If you wanted to clear the field um, and get rid of the tags, you'd have to change this to tags, by the way. Or if you want to add some more to the end, to the front, find and replace, you know, you can use this again to bulk edit your tags if there's a few keywords that you're not happy with. But overall, this is going to save you a ton of time finding keywords for various different niches in one click of a button, essentially. So tip number two is kind of the advanced version of what I just showed you. This one is called Fraser AI, and this is only available to the paid plan, so you can't access it in the free version, unfortunately. But essentially, this will help you write a title, tags, and uh, very soon, they'll also update to write the description for you on top of that with AI, essentially. And the way to do this, once again, make sure you have all your listings selected, then click on Fraser AI, and now you have to configure a few fields right here. So the field containing the 
keywords, once again, is going to be a primary keyword field where it says, you know, baking, fishing, etc. Then the product type. So depending on what you want to sell um, your design on, whether it's t-shirt, hoodies, whatever, you just select that from here is going to implement that keyword or those keywords in the listing. Then the title will be saved in the title field. We can just leave it by default and tags will be saved to tags, but you can change it around if you have a different template, essentially. Um, as you can see, description is not part of it yet, but I have heard it will be added very, very soon. So if you're watching this video, it might already be um, a part of my designs. And then all you have to do is hit submit, click continue, same as with the Redbubble tags, it will be added to the job queue. It will think for a few seconds, uh, depending on how many listings you have, this might take a minute or two, but essentially, as you can see right now, it is configured a title with relevant keywords for Etsy. Uh, this is really, really cool. And tags as well right here for every single listing and according to the specific niche or primary keyword that we selected. So an even more advanced way to quickly generate your listing data and save a tremendous amount of time, um, especially if you do this with like 120 scalable designs in one go, um, then yeah, it's, it's just going to save you so, so much work. So these next couple of tips are going to focus on the canvas system, which is the recent addition to my designs. And I think it's really, really powerful. I'll probably be making quite a few more videos about this in the future, but essentially I've gone ahead and created some mockups right now for these designs, and I'm going to customize them further in bulk. So click onto the canvas button right here to bring the system up and you can change. This is obviously the design file. You can change the input slot right here from default to mockup one to access all of the mockups and um, if it's not the right layout or it's not like the right size what you have to do is click this button right here to fit the canvas to the image size so now it's the 2000 by 1500 pixel dimensions which work quite well for etsy mockups and what i'm going to do now and what i would recommend you try out as well is upload some files to customize this mockup i'll show an example so click on upload and just select a random PNG to try this out. I've got a free shipping label right here, essentially, to draw some more attention to my listing. So you can move this around on the canvas, you can resize it, you can rotate it as well if you want to, and just place it in an area um, where it's very visible. Obviously, you could also maybe use a sign that says 10% off if you always offer 10% off, just things like that, or quick shipping, I don't know, uh, various different things you can add to this to make your mockups more enticing. And now if we click through these listings, the mockups are obviously not the same as our first one that we've just configured, but here's the trick. So if we now click on sync, this green button on the left hand side, then we can flip through the listings. And as you can see, this style has been applied to all of them. And the last thing you need to do now is configure an output slot. So at the moment it's set to mockup one, but that is where our original mockup is coming from. Well, you could overwrite those mockups if you wanted to, or you could paste them into a completely new slot. And I think in this case, it makes more sense to actually override mockup one. And then you have to click on apply here in the bottom right. It's slightly hidden by the, by the chat window, but yeah, just click on this and then click yes, overwrite all the files. And it's going to add that to our job queue. And there we are, that was really quick. Now all of these mockups have been customized. You could also add a logo to this in the bottom. If you've got a shop logo, that just makes your shop look that much more professional as well. Um, so really, really powerful system that you can use in many different ways. This is just an example of how to use it. Um, let's move on to the next tip where I show you another way to utilize the canvas system. I've now gone ahead and created a new collection with designs from my free print on demand graphics bundle, which is linked in the description. This is mainly vintage sunsets and some rainbow graphics. And I've also gone ahead and created mockups for these. And as you can see, the placement on these mockups is not ideal. The sunsets or the rainbows ideally should be higher up the chest and sort of be filling out the top half of the t-shirt rather than be so far down the bottom. And the canvas system once again helps you out massively here with uh, adjusting the placement of your mockups. So once again, click into the canvas system. And as you can see, this is the default alignment of the design file right here. We've got the input slot at the default. And if we just adjust this and make it fit the canvas a lot better and make it align to the top, we can then select the output slot right here as the same. So change this to default as well. And then you can override all of the alignment. Um, we have to click on sync first of all. So it gets applied to all of the other listings as well, as you can see right here. Now it's not going to work for every listing if your designs are not 
the same. Um, so this sunset is way taller, so it didn't really work here. So you might have to double check or maybe adjust it a bit lower and then hit sync. That might actually work better in this case. Um, so if we skip through, as you can see, this, this alignment works quite a lot better. So hit apply once you're done. And then yes, override all the files and it's going to change up the default setting right here, which is not only going to help us with creating the mockups correctly afterwards, but also when these get printed on Etsy, if an order is placed, then once again, the design print will be aligned to the top of the t-shirt, which is a lot better, obviously. Um, you could also use um, the same system. Oh, by the way, before I carry on, uh, the mockups haven't changed yet. That's because you still have to go back to the mockup settings and bulk create the mockups from scratch. Um, but you can also use this way or this feature to, for example, create a pocket style design. If you have some nice little animal graphics, for example, just resize it to the pocket right here, which is quite a common, nice design style. And yeah, then just hit sync and all of your designs will be resized to be aligned to the pocket area. So that's another cool trick to use this. There's even templates over here for various different product types. So you can also sell sticker sheets with my designs. So you could click on this template and you could literally repeat the, the graphic or your design multiple times to create a sticker sheet. So um, kind of like this and then hit duplicate, pull this over. And this is obviously going to take a little bit of work to get it set up properly, but I'm just giving you the ideas and inspiration as to what's really possible right here. Um, I'm not really spending a ton of time getting it accurate, but I think you get the idea. You can adjust the design file. You can create a new output slot over here. Um, if, you, if you want to, for example, create sticker sheets, you can just hit the plus symbol and call this sticker sheet design, then hit the green arrow or the green tick check mark, I should say, click yes. And then once you're done configuring the layout, you could literally just click apply once again um, to export these. Oh, I didn't hit sync. That's my bad. Um, I forgot to hit sync there, so it's not going to work properly. But I think you get the gist. It's created the new slot. And if I had hit sync right there, it would have pasted the new sticker sheet alignment into here. And then I would have been able to quickly publish sticker sheets to Etsy this way. Um, there we go. It's done for the first one. Uh, the second one stayed the same because I didn't hit sync. But yeah, I think you see the power right there of the canvas system for realigning mockups, design files, and for also creating various different product styles in bulk. Tip number five is in regards to adding texture to your designs because adding texture can make your designs feel a lot more premium and create a nice vintage effect. So these sunsets obviously are quite plain. They don't have a texture overlay. And if you want to do this in bulk to all of your designs at once, just head up to this button, select them all, and then head to actions and click on image effect. And in here, uh, we first of all have to make sure that the file slot up here is where our design files are saved. In my case, that's called default. The output file slot is, um, well, where it's going to be saved, the new version. So I've created one right here called textured. Um, you create a new file slot, by the way, by clicking the plus symbol, configuring a name, and then the green check mark. Uh, image effect, this is where you have the option of different texture effects. So you can see a preview right there in the middle. Um, one that works quite well is uh, grunge number four. And they have just recently added some new textures to this. So do play around with them and try out different ones. Um, the effect of the texture, we can leave this as transparent that's what I would recommend because then it erases the texture from your design. If you add color, then you can configure a custom color here and maybe use like a, a white texture effect, for example. Um, but for the most part, I would just use the default right here. You can also generate a preview before you actually apply the effect, which is really, really handy. So you can go through these and pick whichever one you like the look of most. And this is what the result would look like for our first design, which is definitely very, very nice. So let's hit apply image effect and see what my designs comes back with. So there we go. That only took about 10 or 20 seconds. Very, very quick for 30 listings in one go. And the effect looks really, really amazing. And you can now either obviously use these designs, create mockups, uh, publish them to Etsy. Or if you don't want to use my designs, because you can use this function for free as well. And um, if you want to sell them elsewhere, just head to actions, then click download as zip. And here you can just select the textured output slot right here and then just download all of these designs as a zip file and you've saved yourself a ton of time creating this textured creation. 
Speaking of variations, here is another bonus tip that I wanted to give you. I've got 120 designs right here in a collection and I want to change the color scheme of this so I can re-upload these in just a different feeling and uh, save some time right there. So I've gone ahead and selected all of these and the way to do this is head to actions and then click on pattern overlay, which is a really, really cool underrated function in my designs. So the default is selected right here where our designs are saved and the output file slot um, would be maybe we'll call this one recolor then hit the green check mark click yes and now you can select your pattern so by default we've got these abstract colors and we've got a christmas pattern right here colorful waves looks really cool sort of vintage color scheme um, we've got other options like watercolor that's definitely really neat and would work for various different niches if you have like text designs that you want to also have in a in a watercolor variation geometric what does that look like quite dark cloudy so i think you get the idea camo might be very interesting um, that is a style that can work really well for various different types of designs so in this case i think i will use colorful waves because that's definitely a really nice color scheme you can click generate preview once again to see what the end result would look like and if you're happy with it, just click apply pattern overlay. And there we go. Within the matter of literally just one minute, I've created 120 new variations of my original design. And um, this is once again available to the free plan. It's just limited to 24 designs at a time with that bulk action. Uh, I've done it with 120 right here, which is the maximum you can get with the top subscription of my designs. And again, you can now go ahead and uh, click on actions, download this as a zip and sell it on multiple different print on demand platforms or publish it straight away um, through my designs onto Etsy as a digital download or as a print on demand product. If you want to learn another way to save even more time with my designs, then make sure to check out this video next where I show you how to create high quality mockups in bulk.